Welcome to The Rot Focus, a podcast for writers, newbies, and veterans, and everyone in between. We're hosted by M.A. Lee with the assistance of Remy Black and Edie Rooms, all from Writers, Inc. Books. Our focus is productivity, process, craft, and tools. Each episode lasts as long as it takes to fix a quick dinner, drive a short commute, or take a brisk walk. Resources and links are in the show notes. Visit us at therockfocus.blogspot.com. Now, on to this week's episode. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the fourth check-in for the Word Count Challenge. That horrible week I had anticipated all month is now over. I thought it was smart earlier in the year when I scheduled a Wednesday to Tuesday trip, the hectic weekend driving would be avoided. When most people were arriving or leaving, I would be snuggled in and could enjoy. That plan is great for a trip, not so much for a word count challenge. I delayed drafting this episode to Tuesday morning. I drove home on Tuesday and had the start to finish recording to posting the audio file when I reached home with unpacking and laundry still to do. Yet I did squeeze out the words for this episode as I drank my coffee. How did I do with the week start to finish? Let's do the check-in. Wednesday, that was a driving day. As I drove, I thought about the story I'm working on rather than singing along with my music. I was stumped about this scene, the crucial last one for this murder mystery. When last I wrote, I had only managed 240 words. Not good. I made up the difference with nonfiction. I knew what needed to happen in the scene. The murderer had to be revealed with evidence that would force a confession. I had a gimmick that would validate the truth of the confession, but I didn't know how my protagonist would wrest a confession from a man who had kept the murder secret for three years. And I had a dynamic for a third character that I wanted to work into this scene. After the revelation and confession, my protagonist had to leave. The third character would have to ensure the murderer was prosecuted. What would be his motivation for vigilance against the murderer? It had to be strong. By the time I reached my destination, I had partial answers to these questions. I just had to write the words. Yet advancing into that scene still stumped me. I knew the very ending, the clincher for the entire story. I wrote that. A specific image in that bit gave me the start of the next to last segment. I wrote that. About 500 words later, I'm yawning. But I have the two crucial segments of the confession and its validation as well as a satisfying ending that circled back to the beginning. Going backwards through a scene, though, twisted my head around. Yet now I had a shimmering idea of how I would build my trap to coerce the confession from the murderer. Thursday was busy, busy, and I tried not to actively think about these pivotal steps. They needed logic. They needed emotion. The murderer would not see the trap until it closed around him. Then everyone would know the truth and react with varying levels of shock and horror. Back in my room, I read over last night's work. Then I read the words written last week. I tinkered with a few of those. And then I was into the scene and writing madly. 600 words that came so quickly I was making notes in the margins when a great idea flashed in. Thus, in two days, I had 1,100 new words, and the rough shape of the fourth short story was complete. Friday was as busy as Thursday, and Saturday looked to be just as busy. I needed a design brief for the next cover for a fantasy novella. Have I told you that I like to receive my covers in advance? I'm visual rather than verbal. When I have an image, it sparks words, like the image that appeared without plan in the very ending of the story, an image that I used to see my way into the segment of the scene right before the very ending. 
An image that serves as a repeated motif for a character adds richness to many scenes, becoming a descriptive tag with symbolic weight. Having the cover as a right helps in two ways. I can see an element from that cover to spark an idea that will carry words through five or six scenes. It also inspires me, a motivation to finish the work and match cover to words in a tangible form, a paperback novella or novel, or a printout of a short story. The manuscript then lives as a published entity. That's pure inspiration, the tangible in my hands. The only problem is when I fall behind, as I did for a few months. Then the covers get ahead of me and give me guilt. Oopsie. Anyway, on Friday, I roughed out a design brief for a fantasy novella, the third in the trilogy. Transferred into the actual template, I've got a credit for 799 new words. Saturday, I'm starting to be a little too brain fogged for a creative spark. So my work is on the draft of the fourth short story. I wrote to exactly 500 new words, then closed down the iPad. It requires math to figure out my new words. I have my rough estimate, and I'm constantly looking from the rough estimate to the drafted word count on screen. The rough number plus 500 gives me the number of new words to aim for. And new words do come in as I flesh out descriptions and dialogue, and even out the logical steps. The rough estimate is also lower than the actual total as well. I want that leeway, especially during this word count challenge. Sunday was not a slowdown, but when my little document reached 500 new words, I was close to the end. So I worked to the last word. All those words for the story matched to my noted total from last week is 6,924 in the document, 748 new words today, and the draft is finished. A week of objective distance, and once I start the proofing, should go rapidly. Incorporating the writing from the stripped down app on the iPad into my laptop when I arrive home should not be a problem. I'll have formatting to match. If I do have problems, I'll just print it out and retype. 1,248 words will not take that long to type, although if I have to do that, I'll be muttering the whole time about what was promised with the software app and what it delivered. Monday, I intended to draft this podcast episode. I didn't. All day, the opening scene for the fifth and final short story followed me. When I started to write, I told myself, I would just do the opening words, then make notes. Oh no, my brain had another idea. The words flew onto the page. When I looked up, I had a complete scene, the first part of the story, and 1,024 words. And I do not think this will be a long story. The others are over 6,000, and the third tops 7,000. This one can be shorter. It also will be more magical. I love the words I have. I haven't had that feeling in a while, and it is wonderful. I've been satisfied and pleased and excited about the other stories, but I haven't loved the words. I'm so happy that I make detailed notes for this episode draft. I find myself singing as I pack everything except what I will need in the morning, and I go to bed quite content with my world. I'm a writer. And today's words were a blessing. What more does a writer want? On Tuesday, I'm up, bright-eyed and alert, an hour before my alarm. Time to write. Can I get the episode drafted and maintain my checkout schedule? Yes, I manage that. Nothing extra this week, and this episode will run short, but everything's copacetic. When have you heard that word? How did I do this week? Did I meet rules one and two and three? 500 new words minimum? Check, check, check. No days off, rule four? Check. Rule five, 3,500 words for the week. Well, I'm over 4,100 words before I even count the words for this draft. Actually, 1,530, 
So 5,701 words for the week. Check. Rule six, I still do not have to apply this rule. I'm maintaining the challenge. I'm more than succeeding. I can squeeze in words, 500 new words, minimum, even on days that are disrupted. And I'm kicking myself. How many times have I said no days without lines? But I let disruptions and distractions impede my process. I have to learn this lesson constantly. I cannot kick myself too hard for June and July. I accomplished a lot, even if it wasn't directly related to writing new words. I managed to clean out a lot of corners, and maybe all that stuff was oppressing me. My new mantra needs to become 500 new words daily, no matter what, as long as the words aren't drivel or filler. I can manage that, and so can we all. We have the last four days of August to complete the challenge. September, I leave behind all the self-indulgence of June, July, and August and start a series on songs as poetry with lessons that poets can teach writers of fiction and nonfiction. Until then, write on. Thanks for listening to The Right Focus, a podcast for writers at all levels, hosted by Emma Lee from Writers Inc. Books, assisted by Remy Black and Edie Runes. Our focus is productivity, process, craft, and tools. Music is licensed through Audio Jungle called Background Music Loop. Its creator is Alexander Polishchuk, known on Audio Jungle as Plastic 3. The music comes in different iterations. Show notes and resource links for this and other episodes can be found at therightfocus.blogspot.com. Write to us at winkbooks at aol.com when you have questions, comments, and speculations. We will try to answer you as quickly as possible. By the way, we will not mind your email address. That's rude. If you find value in our content, share with your writing friends or write a review. We're small beans here without the advertising budget of the big peeps, and you can make a difference. And whatever occurs, right on.